I'm so proud that I've managed to, to find something I love, find something I'm good at, find something that changes me massively um, on a personal level and feel like I can actually make a difference in some way in the world. You got MS. You're never going to do this silly sports stuff again. You're going to have to go on a whole bunch of drugs and you have to quit work. And I think there was one word going through my head that day and that was that word incapacitated. Physically, I'm not able to do any other sport because when I'm walking, I trip on my feet and my balance is compromised and I have tremors in my arms and my legs. But what I love about it is it gives me an opportunity to feel like my old self. If I can come home with some medals um, to show people, to inspire people, that's great as well. If I can come home with some gold medals, I mean, that's, like, that's the dream. Every single one of them is possibility of gold. Every single one of them will podium, but every single one of them has a possibility of gold. BMX was always my one and only sport love. I did golf and footy and basketball and cricket and all the normal, you know, young kid sports, but bikes for some reason just had a draw that I, I couldn't really ignore. I, I could have ridden my BMX every day, all day, and it doesn't matter how tired you get, it was something that always brought a smile to my face. My passion for bikes, I think, began um, Many, many moons ago, I did triathlon as a, as a little 10, 11 year old um, and loved it, but like hated drowning in the, in the swim and hated running after riding. Um, but the, the, the ride was always like my favorite part, screaming up and down closed roads and, and trying to like, you know, chase people down. Yeah, so I began riding in 2015. I was really struggling to be involved in any exercise because with MS, um, heat can trigger a lot of your symptoms. And I tried heaps of different things over the seven years sort of preceding that um, to try and get back to being really fit and healthy, which I'd always been prior to my diagnosis. And, um, and so the building blocks of the success that I've enjoyed so far were set back when I was 14 years old. You know, like I, I rode until I was about 21. And then after I stopped rowing, I still trained like a rower until I got sick at 27. So like that's a pretty strong training history to then bring into this sport. My first introduction to disability began in around 2001. And I was in a wheelchair full time. The one thing that got me feeling better was actually getting back in the water and swimming um, and got the movement going. Um, I started swimming as a master swimmer again. And then, you know, it just kept me moving. And after a bunch of testing, um, I got a letter two weeks later to ask me to take up the sport of rowing. And I think rowing actually helped even more with my MS. You know, cycling now was just an extension from the rowing. It's the same, physically the same movement with your legs in the boat. And I honestly believe that cycling is keeping me walking. That's it, Carol, push over the top, come on. Do a good job, keep it going. What? Yes, I was swimming in Hobart at the 1998 National Masters Swimming Championships uh, for Australia. And I thought I was gonna do really well because I thought I was pretty fit and I actually swam like a rock. I felt like I had the flu coming on. I was really lethargic. I couldn't get myself out of bed in the morning, even after eight hours of sleep. And then my balance started to go. And then I guess the scary part was that my eyesight started to deteriorate and I had double vision. It felt like my eyes were shaking side to side. I couldn't focus on anything and it, I almost felt seasick. I went and had an MRI and, and some other tests and that was when he was in a hurry and very gruffly said, sit down and pointed to a chair. And I thought, oh, I'm wasting his time. And he pulled my MRI film out and he held it to the ceiling light. And he said, well, there's too many lesions on your brain for someone your age. So 
um, you've got multiple sclerosis and basically your life as you know it's over. So I'd suggest you go home and put your affairs in order before you become incapacitated. I think the most difficult thing for people to understand about MS is the way that it actually impacts each person. We all have a fairly different story to tell in regards to the way that the condition progresses with each of us and it's an invisible disease so most people would see me standing in the street and go well there's nothing wrong with her like how can she be a para athlete and it's like no one really understands like I've got foot drop on one side the whole left side of my body is pretty compromised even my right side has compromised like I've got weakness um, and the way that my body actually moves is not normal I can't hold my grip's terrible so like holding onto the bike is actually really challenging for me my balance is compromised I have cognitive issues there's so many different ways that this disease can impact a person and just because the outside looks, you know, I look really fit and healthy and strong, that doesn't mean that it operates well and that there's a lot of silent struggle with MS. So I just started a new job as a, a truck driver, um, fifth day on the job, so I just hopped into the truck and went off to do my, my normal daily work. And as I was coming back down a, a pretty steep hill into Adelaide, uh, the truck was loaded with sort of 6,000 litres of, of sewage. Um, when I went to stand on the brakes, there was nothing there. So I basically was in a runaway truck um, at the mercy of a hill. At the bottom of that hill was a, a brick wall and some poles and unfortunately a couple of cars as well. I broke my C2 vertebrae uh, and basically amputated my right leg uh, during the crash, so all that was really left was my main artery um, and a little bit of my kneecap is what the doctors have told me. When I was 14 actually, um, in 2009, just hanging out with some friends on an Easter weekend, um, went down to the local creek and we were just rope swinging in and having a good time. Um, I had jumped out of the tree and my arm got tangled in the rope as I was falling and it hit the knot that was at the bottom that we would hold on to and it was enough to catch my arm and um, yeah, I stopped falling suddenly and the rope tore through 90% of my tricep and 70% of my bicep and compressed my radial nerve. Um, so my hand and, and wrist stopped working. Um, my arm was yeah, huge with internal bleeding, um, had third degree burn and um, it never occurred to me that the possibility of never um, being able to use my hand again um, was real, didn't didn't cross my mind that they might have to amputate. And all I wanted to do was kind of like get back on the bike and be able to ride again. Um, and yeah, it took a couple of months um, for me to be able to, but yeah, it eventually managed. Um, and yeah, I was back being being a regular teenager um, in, in no time. Um, never, never with a thought in my mind that I'd be, you know, going to the Paralympics. I'm getting to do something that I've chosen, a life that I've helped you know, make and build. And that, I think that's what I enjoy the most about waking up and starting my day thinking is that you know, some mornings when you don't have the motivation, that's what I wake up and go, you've got a four hour bike ride. Life could, life could be worse, mate. Like just suck it up and go, go have a ride. I look to say that I'm proud and excited to represent Australia at the Tokyo Paralympic Games is like the world's biggest understatement. I was you know, enormously overweight and terribly unfit when I started on this journey. Like it feels like just yesterday that I began. Uh, so to finally get the call and be told you've officially been selected for the team like was actually super emotional. Like I'm getting emotional thinking about it because I feel like I'm realising the dream, not just myself, but the people who've been involved. Super proud and hopefully can like uh, live up to the expectations that we have placed on me and the goal that we set back then, which was some gold medals. Yeah, without hiding it, I'm ambitious um, and I, I do want to win three gold medals. And I think that you know, if I play my cards right, I can. So to me, that is um, that is definitely the definition of success going into these games.
every single one of them is a chance of a gold medal. We have that many world champions on the team, it's incredible. And I could sit here and I could say, you know, look out for Emily Petricola, look out for Paige Greco, look out for Meg Lemon. I could go through the whole list. Honestly, every single one of them is possible, a possibility of gold. Every single one of them will podium, but every single one of them has a possibility of gold.